Hello, my name is Natasha Herbert, and I think I might have a slight addiction to film cameras. I'm back. What's going on? It's Natasha Herbert, and I'm back with another video, and I am going to talk to you guys about the Nikon FM. Yes, this bad boy. But before I talk to you guys about it, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel so I can give you more videos like this. I do go over a lot of different things, so especially cameras and tech stuff. Guys, I absolutely adore this camera. They produced these from 1977 to about 1982, and I just love the way it looks. It just looks so good. Like, it's... I mean, it looks antique. It looks pretty. It, it, it's like, what kind of camera do you have in your hand? Like, what? You know what I mean? Like, this camera is just like absolutely beautiful. And I think I got it for only, it had to be like 80 bucks or something like that. Our local camera store, Dodd Camera, here in Cleveland, Ohio. And I have it paired currently with a 55 millimeter. Now, a 55 millimeter paired with this would actually be equivalent to what you would actually see. So uh, um, shooting with this was absolutely amazing. I went around, actually my very first time shooting with it was at a Black Lives Matter protest. And it was a whole bunch of bikers who were biking um, for Black Lives Matter. And so I shot those shots, check them out. Then I shot the, the rest of my role at the Chinese Lantern event. So it was amazing, like being able to walk around the zoo and see these amazing lanterns. And I was able to shoot some really cool shots with this. So let me tell you a little bit about it, a little bit more. Um, I wanna go over a couple of its key features and things. This bad boy is fully mechanical. I mean, you don't need a battery. Uh, the only reason why you would use a battery, which would be the, this little slot here, is for the meter, um, is for the light meter inside, the kind of meter and, and make sure, you know, I think it, it, when you look inside, there's like a plus and minus sign and then they'll let you know like whether you're overexposed or underexposed. And um, keep in mind, this is film. So you definitely, if you're overexposed, it's better than to be underexposed. Just, it's the opposite. So a lot of people, when they go from digital to film, they kind of get confused, like, oh, oh, oh. But yeah, it's opposite. So um, if you're overexposed, you're most likely going to be able to get your, your, your film developed easier. Next thing, this goes up to one one thousandth of a second, as you can see there, it goes up to one one thousandth of a second. Uh, the ASA, or in our case, in today's language would be ISO, uh, you can change it here, you can change it there, you just pull this little lever and you're able to change it, which is pretty cool. So you, So whatever film you're using, is the one in which you would be using. So, I mean, in some cases people like to, uh, I forgot what you call it, but you guys can comment down below, but uh, it's called, uh, it's when you force it to go, uh, force your ISO to go higher or lower than what it actually is. I forgot what it's called, there's a term for it. But um, yeah, you can definitely do that if that's what you wish to do. But I mean, in most cases you would definitely set your, ASA or ISO to whatever your film is uh, set to. All right, so what's cool about this too is that, you know, like I said, it's fully mechanical. So the levers right here, this is how you advance your film. And then this is also how you would rewind your film here. So you will rewind it there. And then in, in order to open it up, you would just click this little lever. You click this little lever here and you would just pull up and it unlatches and here's the inside. You will put your film here and you will pull it into here, bringing it over into the slot there and then advance your film. So pretty cool lens. Um, I think for me, I noticed like on my camera, like this doesn't, I don't know if it, the light leaks inside of here on the side. So I think I might have to tape that up or like, 
do something to cover that and to get some sort of cover because I think what I had was some light spill inside of here because I saw some shots that I did shoot and the light spill kind of went right uh, it kind of you saw the light leaks on some of my photos. So I was just like, um, it couldn't be, I don't think it was me because I think I was perfectly exposed. I'm pretty sure I was. I think that the light leaked inside. So I think when I'm shooting, I'm just gonna try to cover it up and, and um, shoot or have some sort of tape or something like that. But like I said, this bad boy is nice. Uh, the front little lever here is a self timer actually. So this is the timer, you can kind of hear it. But this, these type of film cameras, I usually shoot with the 55 millimeter. It, this is an amazing lens. This is a 55 millimeter Nikkor uh, uh, two. I believe it's two. Oh no, it's actually 3.5. It's actually a 3.5. But this bad baby is sharp. Very sharp. And then also. It's on my Nikon N2000, the 28 millimeter. So the 28 millimeter is a very beautiful lens. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous. And this is at 28 at 2.8. And um, I don't mind, I mean like, of course, we love to shoot wide open, we love to shoot at a 1.4, 1.8, you know, it gets you a 50 millimeter lens and shoot at 1.8 and th these these will produce some amazing photos like you don't need a leica you don't need all these expensive you don't need these expensive film cameras like this one was 50 bucks this one was 80. like what like people are buying like these one thousand dollar like film cameras and i'm like why what you doing it for when you can get uh, really good quality from these cameras, like you can get amazing quality from these cameras. I'm talking about tack sharp quality. Like, I don't get it. That's it. I'm gonna show you guys some of the photos that I took with this camera for the first time. Check them out. enjoyed this video go ahead and smash that like button also don't forget to subscribe and until next time peace